in 2020, most Americans turned out to vote for who they wanted to be their next president. But 3.2 million people didn't have that chance. Puerto Ricans cannot vote on who they want as their next president. Instead, on November 3rd, they voted on a very different question. Should Puerto Rico be immediately admitted into the Union as a state? Yes or no? Puerto Rico is one of five US territories, meaning it is not a state but also not a sovereign nation. Puerto Ricans are all granted US citizenship at birth and can serve in the military. They also pay most federal taxes except for federal income tax, which most residents don't have to pay. Puerto Rico also has its own elected legislative assembly and a governor. But all the territory's laws can be altered or repealed by Congress. This is especially concerning because Puerto Rico is not properly represented in Congress. Puerto Rico does not have any senators and no representatives in the House. They have what is called a resident commissioner, this woman, who is a member of the House of Representatives, who can introduce and co-sponsor legislation, serve on committees, but cannot vote on legislation. This means that the 3.2 million American citizens of Puerto Rico do not have a single vote in Congress. So let's go back to that question. The referendum asked, should Puerto Rico be immediately admitted into the Union as a state? About 52% voted yes and about 48% voted no. This means that the majority voted yes to becoming a new US state. The referendum was on the ballot along with the next governor of Puerto Rico, but the election did only have a turnout of about 52%. The island's government actually requested $2.5 million in federal funding to help run the referendum, something that was promised in a congressional bill from 2014 if the island held a quote-unquote non-partisan voter education about and a plebiscite on options that would resolve Puerto Rico's future political status. But the Justice Department denied the funds, saying that it could not fund the referendum because it was a form of yes or no vote on statehood and did not contain any other status options like independence or free association. So what happens now? Well, this was a non-binding referendum, meaning that Congress is not forced to act on it. It is just a referendum on whether the people of Puerto Rico want statehood, and Congress may very well not act on it, like they have in the past. You see, this is not the first referendum regarding the political status of Puerto Rico. There have been five prior referendums on this issue. In 1967, the majority chose being a territorial commonwealth over statehood and independence. In 1993, residents favored remaining as a commonwealth, closely followed by statehood. In 1998, a referendum offered voters five political status options. Statehood, independence, free association, territorial commonwealth, and none of the above. The option none of the above won 50% of the vote, closely followed by statehood with 47%. In 2012, voters chose statehood above free association and independence for the first time. And in 2017, 97% chose statehood, but the referendum was boycotted by all major parties that opposed statehood, which led to a record low turnout of only 23%. And then there was of course this year's referendum, in which 52% voted yes to becoming a state. Joe Biden, the president-elect, has signaled that he favors statehood and that he will 
I'm going to work with representatives who support each of the status options in Puerto Rico on a fair and binding process to determine their own status. I happen to believe statehood would be the most effective means of ensuring that residents of Puerto Rico are treated equally. But why do Puerto Ricans want statehood? Well, first, there is the obvious. They would get two senators and five representatives. They would also be able to vote on the presidential election and would have seven electoral votes. Then there are the more depressing reasons. An ongoing financial crisis in a U.S. territory. Remote communities where food and basic necessities are scarce. We are dying. It was the worst storm to hit the island in over 80 years. Thousands of homes and businesses were destroyed. 43% of Puerto Ricans and more than half of Puerto Rican children live in poverty. But because it is not a state, funding for Medicaid is limited. And a lot less people are recovered by it. A third of residents are food insecure, but the territory is not eligible for SNAP the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which usually provides food to those with low incomes. And instead, they have their own NAP, short for Nutrition Assistance Program, which is not nearly as good as SNAP and offers smaller benefits. Puerto Rico's economy has also flatlined and its public debt has reached 74 billion dollars but because it is a territory it cannot file for bankruptcy like states the territory was also devastated by hurricane maria in 2017 which caused an estimated 90 billion dollars worth of damage to the island and a washington post survey found that 26 percent said that their homes had been either majorly damaged or was destroyed by Hurricane Maria. If Puerto Rico is admitted to the Union as a state, it would get more federal funding, which may help its economy and its people get back on their feet. On the flip side, the island's residents would start paying federal income taxes, but because a lot of the residents have low incomes, most residents would fall in the lower tax brackets. Back in the US mainland, polling shows that a large majority supports Puerto Rican statehood. And when it comes to Congress, who have the final say on whether Puerto Rico should become a state, both the Republican and Democratic National Committee's platforms show support for Puerto Ricans deciding their own political status which they have now done. Now it is just up to Congress to take the final step and admit Puerto Rico as the 51st state of the United States of America. <laughs>